Well guys, I've been uh, working on this 6.7 Cummins. I've got a lot together on it, but I've, I've been video on it, but it's kind of hard to keep the flow of the video going because it's sat here for a long time. And this one here, um, I mean, you'll find out more about it as well, but you'll hear it twice. So this one here, uh, th this guy's half brother, or stepbrother, whatever you want to, his, yeah, stepbrother would be what you call it. He's not uh, blood related. Anyways, he he's one of these guys that likes hot rod diesel pickups, and but he's just an absolute genius. He he took this guy's 2012 Dodge pickup and pulled the air cleaner out of it because he wanted to see if he could make the turbo whistle when he drove it around. Well, keep in mind this guy's a hay farmer. He's always out in hay fields and dirt roads, and anyway. Um, pretty much dusted the engine the oil looked like molasses in it uh it was bad really bad uh so anyways he got a long block and after all our recent experiences with reman stuff i told him i said hey man i know you got the long block and everything but i'll put it together i says but if it goes to shit i says you get to pay me to do it again or find somebody else but i'm gonna get paid for putting their piece of shit together I said, so hopefully they do a lot better job than wh whoever you got this from. So far, everything looks good. I mean, I don't really see what you can screw up too bad on one of these 6.7s or 5.9s. But anyways, I've been putting stuff on this thing. I've got um, I got a long ways on it. Uh, I'm waiting. See, I got these. I got one rocker, intake rocker, that was binding up on the pin because... I'll show you, well, <laughs> that oil, it, if you guys ever seen pins oil, you could dip out of a pan and it looked like sludge. Well, that's that's how the, how the oil in this thing looked. And this oil pump's no good. Uh, it's It tore the oil pump up. I'm not going to put that oil cooler back on because I know that oil cooler is going to be full of that sludgy, nasty shit too. So um, i got to get a thermostat for it oil pump oil cooler i got three sets of intake and exhaust rockers i took the rest apart and thoroughly inspected them they're fine but i got three sets of those ordered the oil cooler oil pump thermostat and then i can actually probably uh finish putting this thing together and we can get it in this thing and get it running so anyways that's one project i'm trying to get all this stuff done and get the shop cleaned out and just get things cleaned up in here and I really have been, I know it doesn't look like it, but I really have been trying to focus on getting some of these pickups and just getting some of the clutter out of here. And But anyways, I got all this junk here I'm going to clean up this morning. I'm going to do something with this Triton V8 that I took out of that 2003 Ford. You guys saw the video on that. and I'm going to get this thing. There's a lot of good parts here. I hate to throw the thing away. I mean, it's got a good intake plenum. It's got a whole bunch of good coil, coilover plugs. I mean, the customer said, if you want it, you can have that shit. And, and uh i mean those are good parts and uh yeah there's a lot of good parts there so with our today's environment with our parts thing that we have right now i think it's a very wise decision to hold on to just about everything you can and, and try to utilize it you know so anyways uh what we're going to be doing is i'm going to clean this up around here and and uh i'm going to get a hold of this ct15 cat engine and set it somewhere uh i just wanted to put this out there guys any of you guys that would be interested in this okay this is a ct15 if you guys are looking for a c15 cat block okay what what you can do with this engine this is a ct15 so cat when they made these haul trucks this is a cat block this is a cat c15 block i mean your crank, rods, pistons, liners, all that stuff is Cat C15. So I'm not sure. I think you could make, I think you could, if you put a head and the right ECM on it, you could make it uh, 6NZ out of this pretty easy. But you could take all this shit off of here that basically is international is what it is. It's basically a C, it's a Cat C15 block with a Navistar fuel system on it. I don't think the head will work either. I'm not sure if that's a, I don't think that's a cat head 
on that. I think that's something that International came up with or something and bolted on there. But, I mean, if you guys, if somebody's interested and wants to buy this whole assembly and then you could, you got a good block and you could make you a good C15 engine to stick in something and, and you know, you'd have to find a head and the fuel system and everything like that. You, you, I mean, to me, that's worth, that's worth something, that C15 block there. So email me at, I'll put the link in the description or, uh, and if you email me, I'll send you my phone number or look on the door of my service truck during one of the videos and you'll find it. And you can call me if you're interested. So I got one junk engine out of the way. I had to go look at a Roadrunner hay squeeze it. You know, these guys, eh, they work on it themselves, which is fine. I mean, I get frustrated because... I understand they're trying, you know, you can't fault them too much for trying, you know, but at the same hand, what they do is they crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and crank trying to get them to start and start changing parts on stuff. And then by the time they call you, the starters run, the batteries are completely run down and it takes you three times as long trying to, you know, I went over there and basically check power and ground at the ecm i uh, had power and ground there but i couldn't communicate and i only had a half a volt on the one ccd line on the data link connector on the 1708 six pin which is usually not enough it usually takes about a volt volt and a half and uh anyways i suspect the ecm went bad but they had stuck a brand new lift pump on it and i wasn't getting the kind of fuel pressure that i was uh, normally accustomed to seeing on those but you know, it's hard to say when you, you know, you can't get the thing to turn over fast enough. I mean, just because the batteries are just so, so screwed up in it from them guys cranking on it. So it's just it's frustrating. I called him and said, get some batteries for it and then I'll come back. You know, so anyways, that's my bitch about that. So what I got to do now is I want to zip this fan off real quick. I'm going to mount that onto there. It should mount right up. It should let's see i got that damper loose and that old front mount uh off this one should go right on there i'll use the cat bolts that come out of it they're all they're all sae anyway but Should go right on there. Look at that. Ah, this bracket over here is too damn. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, I see. I see what they did now. Where's that socket at? I see what they did. We don't need all those washers on there. I need to get this out of my way. Now, now it should go on there. Like a glove. Like a glove. Now, please tell me all this is going to line up. So far, so good. Oh man, gotta like it when a plan comes together. It's a nice thing about having a 
cat engine block. They're all pretty much the same on these older C15s, 3406Es, B models, C models. It's one thing cat did right. <laughs> Keeping shit the same. You know, half these manufacturers, they're constantly changing shit they don't really need to change, and it's just, you can't really make anything work. <clears throat> Where is that other cat bolt? It'd be this one right here. I like it. I like it. I like it, man. I like it a lot. Mikey, put the damper back on. I mean, one of these days he's he didn't want to do it. I already told him to. You might want to put a front seal on this thing eventually because let's get it running. I need to turn a dime with this thing. I need to go. So okay. So the next order of business is these old mounts that come off the Peterbilt fuel truck. I'm just going to use those. This is going to be actually mounting. This one's going to be pretty damn easy. <sighs> Let's take these goofy. This is an international thing. International with their little goofy mounts that they have. We're going to get rid of that shit. So let's get... Well, I mean, both they got just two on the bottom, two on the top. Am I going to have to actually pull this mount to get on... Or can I get an in wrench on there somehow to hold it and get on the nut side? Yeah, we got to get these mounts off. And then what we'll do is get a hold of the engine. We'll crane it in here. I'll probably have to pull it back out, but then I want to get my angle right, get my holes marked, and then I'll pull it back out and then I'll get my mag drill. And drill some holes. Exhaust gasket. And uh, make this thing work. Make it do its part in life instead of sitting here collecting dust. Something I was wondering about. Is that just going to be on this thing? I mean, it's still got. We should have a cat ring gear, I would suppose. That should be like an MT39. I wonder if we could stick that starter if it would bolt on there. Hmm. I'm really curious. Um, I'm going to crane over and grab the other engine and get it around behind the truck. Because that would... Those MT-39s are a way better starter than them old Delco MT-40s are. The MT-42s and stuff like that. They spin over faster. All that kind of good stuff. So, just really thinking that I might do that. And just uh, put that starter on that. I think the tooth count should be the same on the pinion gear. And then we'll see what we run into, I guess, huh? Okay, so I got the... Should be an MT-39. Can't tell. Pumice dust all over it. But, uh, let's count them. Um, well, let me put this right here. Eleven teeth on that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven teeth on this one. Okay, it should work. That starter will spin that over a lot faster than that old Delco. Oh, 
So I'm going to start putting in some long days. I want to get this done. I want this sucker done. <sighs> get it out of here. I got a cow trailer that I got to do a bunch of welding on. I kind of need this hole right here. To be honest with you, so I can back the trailer straight in. Man, these were good engines. I mean, I would even take over that piece of shit or that pack car, I'd even take a peek. If you don't know what a peek is, um, Caterpillar had their first electronic engine was a 3406B and they used what they called BTMs. BTMs on the injection pump, and that'd be a brushless torque motors. And the BTMs ran the rack. And there was a BTM up here, where this is, if I remember right. I used to work on those things a lot. That ran the time in advance on it. And they had their problems. The BTMs, that brushless torque motors, would go bad on the rack and they wouldn't hardly run and you know but it, it that was caterpillar's worst probably engine and and by far in comparison to one of these here i'd take that thing any day there are still a lot of them out there that are running you can't get these piece of shits to run but freaking i-beam in the building is like couldn't be more in the way on this project
point. screwing me up right now yeah these are okay shouldn't really be much else hindering me from coming on back it hits us again and that's a fuel line there let's see and then this clutch linkage So what I had to do here when I pulled this engine out is I could not get, I probably could have done it if I had pulled the pan off the old engine too and pulled the pan off this one to get it angled enough. Because you kind of have to pick from the center because I'm on actually a one of the uh, Jake brake studs right now in the middle of the engine with one of my lifting eyes because I couldn't, you can't get a hold of the lifting eye in the back. I mean, there's no way you would with a spreader bar. Uh, but anyway, um, because half the engine's underneath the cab. So anyway, um, you got to get it angled enough. And I still couldn't get it angled enough to get it out when I pulled it out originally without pulling this front uh, mount cross member that the actual engine mount for the front sets on. So... Um, I went to put it back in, and it, I don't know if you guys have ever worked on any of them older Dodge pickups, like I'd probably say like the late 90s, 2000s models uh, Dodge pickups, like probably up to like 05. And if you ever pulled the transmission cross member out from one of those things, you had to usually uh, beat them out with a hammer or uh, do the same thing I did there, put a port of power in there and spread the frame rail on it so you could get the damn thing to slide in there you know and that's what i did there i just had to get it started and once i got it started wasn't too big of a deal to tap it in there with the clown hammer but uh anyway i still got the uh back mounts to figure out i was going to pull what i did on the peterbilts i just mocked my engine up on the front mount and then i bolted my actual engine mounts to the you know to the mounts on the bell housing and then i just lined them up with my holes and marked my holes and then i drilled them it was really really simple but on this one here it's such a pain in the butt to get this engine in and out of there that i'm just gonna have to do some measuring and we're just gonna have to find a reference point somewhere to measure from that way we're measuring the same from both sides uh you know, something like a fuel tank mount or something, you know, something that's going to be the same on each side of the frame flange, each side of the vehicle. And we're just going to have to drill them from the outside and with the mag drill. And uh, that's, that's, I don't want to pull this thing back out of here. So as you can see here, I'm trying to figure out International and some of their, their, their engine mounts are so goofy the way they do these. I was sitting there trying to figure that out, but I eventually... Got it figured out and got them in there. What are you doing, gorgeous? What are you doing, gorgeous? These guys are ready to go home, I guess. Um, let me get these guys loaded up here. Right in there, bye -bye. Ah, Come here, good looking. Get out of here. Ah, arr, arr, arr. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, you little shit bag. Well, anyway, Josie's feeling frisky. There it is. She's in there. Uh, this one's such a pain in the ass to pull out and put back in that I'm not. It's in there. That's where it's staying. I'm not pulling it back out. Uh, what I'm just going to have to do is get the angle right and get my mounts mocked up inside the frame flange and then I'll have to figure out I'll just have to figure out a reference point like this tank mount back here and measure from there you know I'll just have to figure that out and then uh, I'll, I'll get it I'll just drill in from the outside with the mag drill I ain't, I ain't pulling that some bitch back out of there I'll tell you that right now that ain't happening <sighs> But, yeah, she'll be in there, and I think I'm going to have to have a spacer or something. Get some plate and space the mounts between the frame flange and uh, where they'll mount here. So, anyway. Well, i got to go eat dinner with my wife and my mother-in-law and get my little troublemaker here. Get her loaded up in the truck so we can go eat. And uh, tomorrow's another day.